Good afternoon, IED students. Uh, today, we are going to continue our work with that arch block. Yesterday, we finished class with you guys creating a multi-view drawing in your engineering notebooks of this arch block. You guys got to pick the proportions and the sizes of it, and you guys marked those down. So make sure you have your engineering notebooks because over in Onshape, we need to recreate this block using those sizes that you chose. So if you haven't done that yet, go over to Onshape, open up uh, Unit 1, create a new document, okay? You can title it 1.2.3 block or something like that. Decide, um, follow your multi-view drawing with the sizes. So if something was, you know, five units tall uh, on your multi-view, make it five units tall or five inches tall here in Onshape, okay? So if you need more time, pause this video, go back, finish up those two things. But moving forward here in Onshape, we want to get Onshape to create a multi-view drawing for us. So here's what we are going to do. With our part, if we go down to the lower left corner, we're in a regular Part Studio tab. There is an assembly tab, there's nothing in it, it's blank. What we want to add is basically a drawing tab. So we're going to click on the plus, insert new element, and choose create drawing. It's already set as ANSI. This is a standard international drawing template format. No views and click OK. It takes a minute. And what it puts in here for us um, is we have this drawing sheet with a title block. This at the bottom is a title block. It's a size A sheet, which is good because size A is eight and a half by 11 inches. That's a standard typing paper for a printer. Size B, C, and D get bigger so that it's more like a construction blueprint size by the time you get up to size D. But we don't have printers that big. It actually puts your name in there, puts the date, okay, and a few other details about some dimensions and so on. Okay, so what we want is we want to go ahead and select the part, because this popped up right when we came in. Select the part, and that's our front view, and it's gonna place it for us. And automatically, it's going to just have other views if we are just kind of dragging our mouse. We can place a view, okay. but then it didn't automatically do any more. So I'm gonna click on the front view again. I'm gonna drag up to create the top view. I'm gonna click on the front view again, and this time drag diagonally, and there's the isometric view. So click and then just drag the mouse, um, places other views for us. The isometric needs to be shaded. So if we hover over it and right click, we can choose show shaded view. So it has that more realistic look. The other views do not get shaded. They are two dimensional. We don't want them shaded. But what we do want are hidden lines shown, for example. So we are going to right click kind of toward the edge you might have to experiment with a couple of locations for the right click. And a lot of options pop up like show hidden lines. You might also need to zoom out so that you can see this full um, set of options. And we want to click on show hidden lines. And it places it right in there for us. Let's do that also on the top view. Again, right click kind of on the edging there. Show hidden lines and see what comes up. Ah, so you could even do that on the front view, but there won't be any hidden lines. So if we click that, nothing happens. Okay, so even if you didn't know for sure that a part had hidden lines, you can just do it to all of them, see what pops up. But we're not done. We still have a couple of line conventions to include as well. This arc is half a circle. We need the plus sign, the center mark for this circle. So we do have to add that one manually. So up here in the toolbar, if you hover over it, we see that option, it's called center mark. So we just need to activate it, click on the arc or circle, 
and it places it there for us. One more item. We need the center line going through this, well, the hidden hole um, in this arch block. We won't have a center line over here because the center line here, um, I mean, it's the center of a circle, but it's not really the center of the entire cylindrical hole because it's only half a cylinder. So object lines always take precedence over any hidden lines or any center marking lines. So if there's an object line there, that's all that you will see. You won't see any other line. So to create that center line for this top view, uh, it's in the same general area over here. It's called a two-point center line. So it, if we hover over it, it tells us exactly what to do. It creates a center line between two points by selecting two points to place the center line. Okay. We can also adjust the length of the center line using the grip points once we've placed it. Let's go ahead and activate the two-point center line, and it helps us to locate the center. The icon will help change. We can kind of drag around, and it'll show us, yep, we're right on it. So click there. Obviously, things can get kind of wild. Let's click there, and it places it for us. If we want to deactivate that, we can hit the Escape key. So that's deactivated, and then we could select this and use those grip points like they were talking about if you wanted to make it longer. I don't see a need to make it longer, so we're good there. So this is the completed multi-view drawing of that arch block with all of the line conventions included. So your job for the rest of the class period is to open up your other isometric parts that you've been making. So if you go back to your unit one, you might have some things labeled isometric number one and so on. So your job is to open up those parts, create those drawings, make the multi-view drawing, projecting all the views that we need, and applying hidden lines, applying those line conventions. So that's your job for the rest of the class period. If you get stuck, go back to the beginning of this video and rewatch some of the steps uh, to help you guys out. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.